Hi guys! Welcome back to our channel. This is Ephraim and you're watching Planting with Ephraim Grace. Another day, another plant to discuss. Ito na naman ang inyong hardinerong kapitbahay na sasabing, tara, usap tayo. Hi guys! Welcome back to our channel. This is Ephraim and you're watching Planting with Ephraim Grace. Magandang araw mga kapuso, kapamilya, kapatid, at syempre mga kapitbahay. <clears throat> One of the most sought household uh, plant today are the potos. And because of its low maintenance, easy to take care of, and the beautiful foliages. But there's one potos that captures the, the interest and attention of most of the collectors. This is what they call Cebu Blue Potos. Okay? So, this one. Okay. So, this is called Epipremnum Pinatum, also known as the Cebu Blue Potos. And this particular plant is endemic in Cebu City. Okay, so, syempre made in the Philippines. Proud to be Filipino. Okay, so, as you can see, this plant is a variant with silvery blue shiny leaves. So, makikita natin yan. So, medyo may pagka-bluish siya in color. That tends to have a sparkle under the right lighting condition. So, nagkakaroon siya ng magandang color blue. And yung kanyang reflection, actually, no kanyang color. Na shiny siya, tapos nag-bluish in color siya, actually. It has a beautiful leaves and can be grown as a climbing or trailing type of plant. So kasi siya, usually, uh, this is found primarily doon sa mga ilalim ng mga puno ng, ano, puno ng, um, ng sa mga ilalim ng puno. Actually, doon natin makikita yung ganitong klase ng, ng halaman. Okay, so um, we're going to repot this particular plant kasi kakareceive ko lang din siya. And we're going to look into how it will be going to survive in our environment. So, the light for this particular material is actually bright light condition. Uh, kasi nga, since na siya ay nasa undercover siya ng ating mga plants, ng ating mga puno, so dun natin siya titingnan kung anong klase ng light conditions ang maganda para sa kanya. So, the soil that I'm going to use here, I'm going to use here a combination of yung mga organic material, syempre, may mga coco choir, tapos meron siyang combinations ng uh, uh, pumice rocks, so, pero pwede nyo gamitin yung mga tinatawag natin mga perlite rocks, okay? So, yung mga maliliit na mga, mga, mga bato na yon it will add up dun sa past draining uh, characteristics ng plants. Tapos yung mga coco choir naman, it will induce or it will give the moist na kailangan ng ating halaman, okay? So, yun yung importante regarding with the potting mix ng ating material or ng ating plants. So, kailangan natin ng moist and past draining soil mix, okay? So, uh, kasi nga, yung ating uh, Cebu Blue requires primarily yung well-draining soil na tinatawag. So that it will definitely um, makaiwas or it will definitely um, resolve yung problem natin sa root rotting. Kasi pag nagkaklog yung, yung, yung ating uh, soil mix ng mar maraming water, the tendency of the, of the roots is mag -rotten. Okay, so that is not good. So, hindi natin gustong gawin yun. Okay. So, yung ating, ating material na ating gagamitin. And also, syempre organic material since na ito kasi yung ating Cebu Blue na bubuhay siya doon sa mga ilalim ng ating mga puno and nag-feed siya doon sa mga uh, uh, decompose or partially decompose na mga dahon. Yun yung kanyang pinakapagkain. So, i-mimimik lang natin, uh, gagayahin lang natin yung environment na kanyang kailangan uh, makuha. And aside from the fact na, na medyo moist yung ating soil. Okay. So, we have this particular plant. So, itong ating plant na to, it came from the CDO, uh, Tabon, if I'm not mistaken. Um, it's a very nice uh, specimen na meron tayo ngayon kasi nga, very nice yung kanyang dahon, napakaganda. And I got this one na medyo mura ng konti, okay, compared dun sa mga iba na binibenta, which is highly commercialized na rin. So, sana hindi nila gawing masyadong commercialized yung ating mga plants, okay. Okay, so what I have here, so nakakover pa rin siya ng ating coconut cost, tatanggalin lang natin. The reason behind that is to maintain the roots at saka yung supply ng ating material. Okay, so what good thing about this plant, so this is composed primarily of 10 leaves or so. So may mga cuttings tayo na iba. Okay, kita nyo to. Okay, so yeah. Oopsie. Okay, yeah. so makikita nyo, you know, may tatlong dahon na siya. Tapos meron na siyang cutting. So, itatanim lang natin siya pa ganun. Na, um, na naka, naka-horizontal. Okay? So, we're, not, we're going to have that one. Na naka-horizontal. 
So as much as possible, uh, lalagay natin siya na horizontal para marami yung training, mas ma, mas lush, lush yung ating ating plant na gagamitin. Okay. So um sige. So in terms of the watering, so hindi naman natin kailangan siya ng specialized na water or anything na kailangan nating i-meet. However, syempre, uh, we could go along with the normal normal way of um uh, normal way of uh, watering the plants. So, wala naman tayo masyadong paprolumahin regarding with the watering. Basta wag lang natin yung overwater. And also, syempre, importante na yung ating soil, yung ating material ay uh, past draining soil yung ating ginagamit sa kanya. Okay? So, yun ang importante sa ating uh, sa ating plant na to. Okay. So, um, um, so, another one is the temperature. So, this particular plant material, syempre, kailangan niya ng temperature na swak dun sa kanyang condition. Since nasa ilalim siya ng mga puno-puno, so this particular material or this particular Cebu Blue can dwell with the temperature of 15 to uh, 26 degrees Celsius. So, tamang-tama lamang doon sa ating temperature sa loob ng bahay. Um, kasi nga, um, that is actually a good thing about this particular plant. So, pwedeng-pwede siya doon sa ating condition sa loob ng bahay na 15 to 26 degrees Celsius. Hindi siya pwede siguro ilagay natin masyado sa labas na kung saan ay very harsh yung condition ng araw. Kasi nga, um, it will definitely scarce or it will definitely um, um, bababurn yung dahon ng ating epinephrum. In terms of the humidity, well, the humidity... Uh, is actually swak din naman sa kanyang condition sa loob ng bahay. So, um, yun yung, 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 yung humidity ng Cebu Blue can tolerate, can tolerate yung basic household humidity na meron tayo sa loob ng ating bahay. Um, fertilizer. Well, actually, this particular plant, uh, kailangan siya ng fertilizer once it is, a growing, is, is, it is in the growing stage. So, kung growing stage yung ating Cebu Blue, kailangan-kailangan natin ng uh, ng, ng fertilizer for this one. Kasi nga, kailangan niyang magparami, kailangan niyang magpa, magproduce ng panibagong mga dahon. So that is the reason bakit natin kailangan lagyan siya ng fertilizer. Pero once this one became an adult, kung nag-adult stage na siya, hindi na natin kailangan lagyan ng maraming fertilizer. That's a good thing about this particular plant. So hindi natin kailangan gawin yun sa kanya. Okay? So, um, regarding naman dun sa kanyang um, um, pag nag-matured na siya well I think hindi na niya kailangan ng maraming fertilizer kasi nga uh, stable na yung kanyang uh, mga, mga mga systems stable na yung kanyang uh, material uh, yung kanyang body so wala na tayong kailangan lagyan ng, ng, ng fertilizer pa masyado okay? so siguro kung gusto pa natin magkaroon siya ng maraming mga dahon pa siguro Siguro lesser na lang yung ating dahon na ilalagay dito. O lesser na yung, da yung lalagay nating fertilizer. Okay, regarding with the pests and diseases, yes, hindi to ligtas sa mga pests and diseases. Although it is um, uh, found in in, a nat uh, in a, its natural environment sa Pilipinas, so nangangailangan din to syempre ng pangangalaga natin. Uh, the reason behind that, uh, there are some suckers, yung mga nagsasak na mga insekto na meron tayo sa Pilipinas katulad nung tinatawag nating mga um, spider mites so ito yung mga suckers na to eh ito yung mga nag, nag, nag nunguha ng mga nutrients mga saps doon sa na, kanilang natural environment and that is actually a problem pag meron tayo mga spider mites the same thing also pag meron tayo tinatawag na mealybugs yan yan yung mga suckers kung saan sila ay nagbe-benefit doon sa nutrients na meron ng ating Cebu blue and of course, um, if you have some part, uh, if you have that particular problem in your plant, the tendency now is, uh, kailangan nating uh, gawa ng paraan kung saan linisin natin yung ating subu blue, punasan natin para hindi siya mag-encourage ng, ng ganong klase ng uh, diseases, yung ating uh, spider mites at saka yung at uh, tawag nating box. Now, um, in terms of the toxicity, guys, uh, this particular plant definitely meron siyang toxin, okay? Meron siyang toxin, ha? Um, yung kanyang sap, once ingested, okay? Kaya nga, once ingested, um, it 
definitely promotes yung tinatawag nating allergic reactions especially kung napaka sensitive ng tao na na, uh, na nakas, naka, nakakain or naka-ingest ng ganitong klase ng halaman. Okay? So, also, syempre, hindi lang tao ang pinag-uusapan natin. Syempre, yung inyong mga pets. Uh, mga, ano. So, I would requ- recommend na ilayo natin ito dun sa mga pets natin sa loob ng ating bahay. Kasi definitely, uh, it will cause them some uh, problem in, the, in, a, in terms of their ingestions or ingestion. So, it might also encourage yung tinatawag nating allergic reaction sa kanila. So, yun natin mangyari sa kanila yon. So, guys, this is my Cebu Blue. So, naripat na natin yung Cebu Blue. Um, I'm just going to take this one dun sa medyo siguro uh, dun sa ating uh, sa lugar na kung saan ay medyo may konti, may ilaw, may light, may bright light. Pero syempre, hindi na masyado dapat nagda-dry yung ating conditions ng ating uh, air at saka yung ating uh, available light condition. So yun yung ating uh, kailangan subaybayan at tingnan. So I'll give you a feedback regarding with the conditions kung ano ba nangyari sa aking Cebu Blue. And I'm really happy about this particular Cebu Blue kasi nga malalaki yung dahon na napunta sa akin. And also so there are some of those things that they are already maturing. Okay, so this is how many leaves? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10 leaves. And I'm happy about this particular plant. And so I think that all, that's all folks. You're watching Planting with Deaf and Grace. Please watch and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And you may add to your app page si Marie Gracia Tanglihim na Hardin. So see you again next time for another planting session. Okay, so uh, see you next time. Goodbye and see you again. Bye-bye. September we met I could tell by a smile You hadn't been with a good girl like me in a while Yeah, you were impressed Couldn't leave me alone Text me every time That you pick up the phone And I had control in the driver's seat But my hands are slipping off the wheel Now the tables have turned Now I'm up all night I'm picturing you Acting like a fool I'm on the other side You're like a full moon Catch my breath.